Uh, I'm gonna fix it in the edit. Now the edit is just like, okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Here's what, a song. What edit? Am I supposed to? Oh, I was supposed to remove that. Yeah, I did that. No, I just said fuck it. But either way, since we are running a bit late, uh, let's just go ahead and get rolling. Um, All right. So, guys. Welcome back to the Now You Made It Awkward podcast. This is episode 70. And, uh, well, I don't have my normal cast in any way, shape, or form. Because uh, it's a weird time period. And also, due to baseball scheduling, Ricky is not available for the time being. You know, ba- however long baseball season is. So, uh, we're not going to be oh. hearing from Ricky, except maybe on the, the random uh, Mike's schedule is what it is. Rusty is somewhere in Canada, and well, Dormammu is usually busy being Dad Mamu. So, you know, we'll try to get normal schedules here when we can. Uh, but we're gonna do the best we got. Even if I gotta pick up extra people in in live, you know, in real t- personage, however the fuck that means in real life. Eventually, I was gonna get it right. I've been drinking words, but in the interim. I do have a fantastic guest host here who just can't figure out what times are, but that's okay. It's just Dante. Hey, I, I knew times. I was watching Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Wait, the new one or old one? <laughs> nah, not the old one. They just put it on uh, Paramount, so I was watching the old cartoons, actually. No shit. So, so like I, I was like balls deep into it. I'm like on Instagram doing my shit, and I look up, and I saw your message. I was like, oh, sent me a link. Yeah, Let's go laugh at this link. We're suppo- oh shit that's yeah. not laughter no that's not a meme that's a hey where you at <laughs> i was literally gonna text you like i was gonna say are you asleep because <laughs> so, like you were the one who picked the time he said, it'll actually make way more sense to do it now it's like <laughs> well the funny thing is my daughter says to me like probably about 10 minutes ago or 10 minutes before I, I got your message she goes dad you think that maybe in a few minutes uh we can play sss tricky I was like, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Just give me yeah. a moment. And then she saw me like running and grabbing on my phone. She was like, I'll wait. Yeah, you got time for that later, Sophie. It's okay. Um, the, the old school SSX tricky on 64 or? Yeah, well. Or a different. What, I don't. What system am I playing on? GameCube, Wii, whatever it is. Oh, okay. Um, some Nintendo. So, yeah, so, hey. some version of it. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember she likes that. It. I remember that from back in the day. Uh, I liked uh, what was it called? Um, shit, I just I I had it in my head, and then lost it right before I went to say it. The other one, it was a uh, is it just 1080, 1080 snowboarding? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We played the shit out of that. Uh, between that and uh, Wave Race sixty four, those were all kind of the shit back in the day, and pretty much the same game with different sports. My wife used to nanny a family, and the oldest kid, he had a PS2, and he had SSS Tricky on it. I used to teach that kid in preschool, so we would always play, yeah. but he was now at the age where he had kind of a shitty attitude, because, you know, boys, no. and the, he he would always give his sisters a hard time, so anytime he was a bully to his sisters, I'd go downstairs to the basement. Uh, turn on the game and set all the records. Like <clears throat> I just fill the uh, the record thing up with my name. He eventually he figured out how he would just reset it. Like the bully the, uh, via memory. proxy. I'm a I'm a. <laughs> then, like, we ain't even playing against each other. I'm destroying your way of life. <laughs> <laughs> and then every time I would see he cleared it, I just go and do it. He was like, dude, I'm having fun. I don't care. I'll keep doing this. Wow. So good job. Good job. He's okay. He he did like he and his uh, wife just had their first kid. Uh, he seems like he's well adjusted now. Now, yeah. I think it's because you did that. That's what it was. I think so. It, I mean, it taught him to never give up. Yeah. <laughs> See, but if he if he uh, played six, Star Fox sixty four, he would learn to never give up. And trust your instincts. Uh, I mean, he would have, but. You learn you know. from the rabbit. He just is always yelling it every time you go into the fucking fighting Star Wolf at the end. It's a, I think it's the first thing you get yelled at. 
that's either it's either the first thing he says then or the first thing he says on the very first level on Corneria. I honestly think he would have quit. Like he he wouldn't have made it that far. He would have just like fuck this game. <laughs> Uh, dude, how did we ever play games like that back in the day with single joysticks? We didn't have a choice, but, and but, we thought, "Oh my god, this is it." It was it, it but like I tried yeah. to play an actual sixty-four game with the real controller. I don't know, a couple years ago at my friend's house, and we're trying to play Goldeneye. I'm like, "How did we do this?" It's like it's like we're so used to dual dual sticks now. It's like it's crazy. Yeah, I I don't know. Only- only time i really messed with i i don't think i ever played 64 at all my oh friend God. cedric had a 64 and i think i just jumped straight to playstation mm. and that would do it was it. just kind of like I, I went from genesis to playstation and i never messed with nintendo 64 at all period but i also didn't like the joysticks so i was like nah i'm out of here yeah makes sense Dude, they had SSS, SSX tricky on like everything. Mm-hmm. PS2, yeah. Xbox, GameCube, Game Boy Advance. They just put that shit yeah. on everything. That's fucking Frank's Red Hot right there. Yeah, anytime I mention it, oh, it's in, EA. anywhere, That's it why. does not matter where I mention it, at least two people, their heads pop up. They're like, oh my God, you're, you're, you're aging us here. And I was like, yeah. I was just playing that game to be a bully. <laughs> don't fuck about that game. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, guys, uh, for those who don't know who Dante is, he is the host of a few podcasts that you can all find in the links down below. So, Off the Mats, Colompton Beer Club, and, of course, So You Like Horror, which uh, I featured on a little while ago, which was fun. Yeah, you're you're on off the mats as well and on off the mats and uh you came over to the main shoki channel for robot jocks thing so we're doing mm-hmm. we doing work and we got a couple other things in uh hopefully in the schedule which would be fun both for halloween yep. time and then hopefully beginning of next year i'm excited because i like doing movie reviews and the stuff that we have lined up i'm i enjoy well i think our halloween one is gonna have to happen just because I, I pitched the ideal that I initially had, uh-huh. and it got kind of shot down by by the group. So I was like, "Fuck all y'all." <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Uh, we'll talk about a different Exorcist movie, bitch. Fine. <laughs> we'll do it the other way. Um, and by the way, uh, speaking of that, I did finally see the trailer for The Exorcist. Uh, be- is it Believer or The Believer? Uh, Believer, I yeah. think it is. I saw that. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Um, so I did see that trailer, which was very interesting and definitely looked up your alley. Yeah, I, I'm, I have mixed feelings on it, but I'm definitely going to see it. But the whole thing right now is just because they've already revealed that it's a trilogy. I'm a little pissed. <sighs> yeah, why tell why tell it at the beginning? You know, yeah. Don't, yeah. And don't don't be like, hey, it's been greenlit for a trilogy. No, no, no. You don't do that shit until two months after the movie's out of theaters. Then tell us it's going to be a trilogy, you know? It's the same uh, group that did uh, the 2018 Halloween, Mm. and they didn't mention that was a trilogy. I found it on accident and started posting it everywhere Mm -hmm. because I was on um, Movies Anywhere, whatever, uh, like little movie app, trying to find Halloween 2018, and then I saw Halloween... um, kills and i was like what the fuck is that oh and yeah they had a date and i was like oh shit and that's all halloween ends i was like get yeah. the fuck out of here all the halloweens so. is like but well the problem that's real stupid is that from what i know halloween kills was like kind of the end and then it's like nope we're gonna do another one to end it end it <sighs> and, okay yeah, the, that one was not they should have just left it at halloween kills and yeah that's... like you know what we're good yeah, I've seen multiple reviews of the the latest Halloween series, and yeah, that's all they kind of had to say about it. Like the 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 wannabe tagging along with Michael and and them having like a drunken fight in the sewers or whatever the fuck that was. They're just like, really, yeah. really, this if is what we're doing. That movie, if they called it anything but Halloween, I might have been into it, but yeah. because it was Halloween with Michael Myers, I was like, you know, the 2018 one was fine. They could have left it there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this was good. We don't we don't need it. And uh, Daryl and Phil just actually posted something in our chat that they're shopping the the Halloween property around 
Somebody else again, is gonna like, snack it up. He's like, just chill. Just, just chill. let We're it go a... for now. Give us, give us, give hey. us ten years or something. Give us, give us a break at least. Like, like put it in the vault. A, uh, Disney vault. A Camp Crystal Lake prequel coming next year. I knew about that. They're, yeah. they're trying to uh, bring back Freddy. I think uh, they're in heavy talks about re re uh, booting Freddy again. Um, Leprechaun is coming back again. Again, again. Um, so it's like, look, dude, just just chill. Just chill. Let Michael chill. We've got enough going. We got the Chucky TV series on season three now. We're good. I forgot about Scream that. Scream is doing well. So just let Michael what, chill. What about Jason? Is Jason not doing anything right now? Oh, Camp Crystal so Lake, like be, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But there's no so, current there's no current Friday the thirteenth no. stuff going on. Okay. I think that one's tough to do though. I mean, um, depending on which way you go with it, if it's not the dead guy possessed by whatever demon thing then that's one thing but if it's just like the original you know when it's you know d you know the not no spoilers for a 35 year old fucking movie where you know it's the mom of a deceased kid going around killing people who she blames for the murder of the or death at least of her child you know when that was the thing that that i had a hard time with when they did the reboot or i'm sorry remake in yeah. 09 is that it was just that it, it was like you can't we already know the mystery mm -hmm. so they jumped past all that and it kind of just fast tracked that first one and then jumped into jason with the mask and everything and it was yeah. like okay yeah we, we skipped the yeah. uh we skipped the coveralls and the in the paper the burlap sack the on the head mask. Yeah. mask um which a buddy of mine uh did for halloween he, jason's like i think his favorite he likes all the supernatural horror guys from the 80s and whatever but i think i think jason's his most favorite i could be wrong it seems like he's got the most jason stuff um mm -hmm. he's got he's got the mask the NECA released a couple of years ago he's got all the fucking pops he's got all that shit um so i mean like it, he he really he's into the horror stuff and he actually like i guess his his uh garage is kind of his man cave but it's also you know where they watch the sports drinks you know he's got all the other stuff out there for that kind of thing and then barbecue outside but it's you know it's it's half man cave half clutter you know that kind of thing it's like whatever Much fits. Like basement <laughs> yeah yeah um speaking of which i've been wanting to ask what is that behind you um so was it two years ago for halloween i was zuri from black panther oh okay and sarah actually made that by hand okay like it's it's the front uh, yeah 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 it's I forgot what it's called, Press. but uh, yeah, it's because it's what I, it's what it looked like. It looked like a tribal thing, but it also looks like some type of cable weight machine or banded weight machine. Because I mean, look, you got the like locks in place, and you got all the things hanging from yeah. it. It kind of looks like a, a shitty Bowflex in a way, um, or something like that. <laughs> I told her like after she made it, I was like, yeah. she was like, all right, we can just throw it in the closet with the rest of the Halloween. So I was like, no, that's art. You you did that by hand. Yeah, like fuck this we're, like i'm hanging it up yeah you and... can almost you can almost put it in like a big frame and like put like the the purple robe behind it or whatever color he wore in the movie that would look good i only wanted to be zuri because i wanted to walk around with great fanta and say to people the strength of the black panther is given to you and like that was it I, that's pretty fucking funny yeah. I, I had no real connection Did, to the character. I, I didn't care about Forrest Whitaker and his lazy eye. Yeah. I just wanted to pour fans in people's mouths <laughs> on Halloween. I was gonna ask if you put a little Botox in your eye to get the get the droop going. <laughs> uh, no, I, nobody I goes that far. Door. No one goes that far. It's like no, I just decided to have a stroke and then had it fixed. That's just it's like dedication <laughs> to the craft, man. Dedication to the craft. Yeah. Dante, you're really in character tonight. No, he's actually having a fucking stroke right now. <laughs> it's, it's like, like ticking. It's like dick, 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 dick. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's not good. He had he had a little too much of the Black Panthers lean. It's like, <laughs> it like, like how hey, how much Benadryl did he put in that shit? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Did I, I? I don't know if I had a bottle of Fanta in my hand when we took the pictures or not. But I didn't that, see the, the whole way. the whole thing was I wanted to pour Fanta in people's mouth. That's that was the whole purpose of the night. I don't know if I drank that night. I'm pretty sure I didn't, but I was just trying to feed people Fanta. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not wrong. It's not terrible. I mean, you could do worse grape drinks than Fanta. Yeah, I mean, I mean it could it could have been purple Kool Aid for all we know. Yeah, and I don't know. that that gets a little dicey. 
little little uh, purple Kool Aid and some vodka. I mean, it's just have a little fun. But you know, it is what it is. As I sit here and I drink some pink drink, you know, hey. Mount, Mountain Dew and tequila. Hey, it's Monday. <sighs> it is Take Monday. God off. damn it. So, uh, anyways, guys, do that like and subscribe thing to all our stuff. If you would like to write into the show with other questions, comments, or telling us to fuck off something, you can do that at now you made it awkward mail at gmail.com. It is in the description down below, so you don't have to try to figure out how to spell it. You can literally copy and paste it to whatever browser source or email app you're using. So, yay, do that. But also, if you have any comments you, you know, from previous things, we usually read them, but we haven't had many lately unfortunately because most of our commenters have been absent uh other than mike mike has been commenting like he he on the uh quickie little thing i posted earlier on a power rangers rant that didn't go out in the main episode he just said links to that i say why would i put links in that fucking short video mike <laughs> also mike you have significantly more subscribers and watchers than this channel you should be sharing our links <laughs> that's what i often wonder about with Colompton. yeah it's like should i be doing more with Colompton on bjj wiki Maybe. but then i remember some of the stuff i say and i'm like mm, mm, maybe yeah. not yeah. uh going way back when to episode 66 jay did leave a comment and he said i think they should make a rubber too uh you and i agreed in the i think we agreed in the episode that they should not uh, actually do a sequel to that. I don't think it would be fair. A remake might be in, in order. All CG yeah, I was remake. Say, they, they could do something else. Not necessarily a sequel. But. Yeah. I mean, it's been it's been way long enough. They could do a, a reboot. -quel. You know? They could do they could do they could do the, the Robert re, uh the Robert origin story or whatever. Robert takes Manhattan. I don't fucking know. Um Although that might, like, uh, oh, could you imagine he him? He went to Hollywood. Yeah, he went to Hollywood. I mean, like the only real sequel would have to be the most realistic sequel ever, where he's literally just getting work as a tricycle. <laughs> but I also like to believe that he's still stuck on the four hundred five somewhere, or got run over in actual traffic. Because that was the most unrealistic thing about that whole movie is that he somehow rolled up into Hollywood and didn't find any traffic with him and his cadre of tires. Or as as we kind of theorize maybe john kramer got a hold of him and put billy on him and you know i look part of Saw franchise you know i looked it's not the same model tricycle nah fuck them it was so close though it's very similar but there's a, there's a significant amount of differences the handles are different the tubing is a little different there's no i don't think there's a bell and there's definitely no blood on it well i guess there could be more blood on it now but you know that's different you know, that, that was just our hope and dream, you know, that you got a possessed tricycle out there being a movie star in horror movies, which is even funnier. But I kind of would like to see him like if this was a family guy cutaway, he would be doing like rom coms. <laughs> true. Very yeah, true. It would definitely, I, you know, that's war. Uh oh, porn. Maybe it didn't go well for him. Maybe, maybe. But I don't know that I want to see where that goes. Although now that I think about it, I remember a, a I remember a video of a guy on the streets of L.A. using a bicycle or tricycle handle to um, himself. Um, for those not in the Patreon, you won't see the motion I just made. Uh, but if I recall correctly, and I'm sad that I remember this, I believe that was a blue tricycle. Robert was a nice classy red. So, classy classy red so um <laughs> i guess you know normally we do nor weeks and stuff like that you know what we've been watching and stuff like that but we're a little short on time today so i think we'll just get right into it um so normally i don't like to blatantly steal from nerd rage because we already joked that we are nerd rage light uh, cause we already do like nerd weeks and we do a lot of similar conversations. We don't do it on purpose, but a lot of times we end up having the same conversation they'll have on nerd rage, even though none of us have listened to the newest episode by the time we record. It's just a weird way our world works. Um, but in this case, I did listen to the last episode of Nerd Rage, and an accidental conversation kind of came about because Bobby talked about they went to, um, I think it said it was Baltimore Comic Con. 
and uh, there was a there was an overweight female dressed up as Princess Peach, and I do believe it was one of Bobby's daughters made the joke or something like if it was like a, a whole bucket of peaches, something like that, which is first of all props because that that shit is hilarious um <laughs> oh, that's great yes but it brought up a really it, it almost heated discussion uh about the idea of self-expression and acceptance societal acceptance when it comes to large people as it goes um Basically, there's on one side the idea that um, accept everyone at all sizes or uh, beautiful at all size movement, all that kind of nonsense. And then there's the other side where it'd be like, hey, maybe stay within your lane in a way of, look, if you're a big person, maybe find something that fits your dimensions in a very literal sense, you know, being Princess Peach in a tight pink dress mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, all all power to people who really don't give a fuck and they just want to have a good time. And I, they, they mentioned that, and, you know, that that's a very good point, you know. But then it is a discussion to be had because Joe was very much, like, full acceptance mode because he's a cosplayer, you know. He, he also has issues with do, uh, body dysmorphia and self-image and stuff like that. And... Being a fat person who has a really hard time finding costumes to wear at all, because I, I wanted to dress up for Renfest last year and I had to do whatever I could because, well, I'm I'm most most of my dimensions are fairly well normal, but I've got a big belly, I've got some man boobs going on, you know, and not only that, I already have broad shoulders as it is, so it's a little hard to find anything to fucking fit my fat ass and let alone look good in it, you know, but. There's that same thing. I, and, you know, you'll see it around like, hey, maybe you shouldn't be wearing that. Like, fucking have have a small sense of shame. You know, that's that's my point of view. And I don't mean be ashamed of yourself, but I mean, like, the, the sense of self-awareness when it comes to, like, because a lot of times they'll wear stuff that doesn't fit right at all. And I'm meaning more specifically females to where either, you know, you've got some belly hanging out or their enormous tits are hanging out and not in a, ooh, fashion, more of a, uh, fashion, you know, where, where the, like, Danger Will Robinson level of spillage, you know. And I like some boobies flopping out, but sometimes, and we've all seen people of Walmart to know what we're talking about here. Oh. Um, so it, it, it's a, it was an interesting conversation. I just want you know, I know you've got some thoughts on this, so I'll let you go for a little bit, and then I'll share some more thoughts. Um, so, you know, I have kind of mixed feelings on it because I am kind of in acceptance mode, you know. I, I'm, you know, on that side of like, look, be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. But there is also kind of a line to it because there has to be an understanding. If you say, hey, I'm overweight, but I want to go out and wear the string bikini. And, and, you know, people start fucking with you about it. You have to understand that's what you signed up for. And that's not to say people it, it's OK for people to be bullies. I'm not saying that. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. But they do exist. And, you know, it, I, I know people say, oh, well, you know, you're you're, you know, victim blaming or whatever. And it's like, yeah, you know, maybe to to a small degree. But I think there's also kind of a thing of, like you said, have some fucking, you know, common sense about it. It's like I, I'm i a heavier fella. I'm, you know, I kind of fluctuate between, you know, depending on how how motivated I feel like being. I might go bust my ass, and, you know fucking slim down and say you know now we're competing this weekend mm -hmm. and you know i look i look like okay he belongs on the jujitsu mat yeah. and there there are several weeks where i don't feel like doing shit and then i put on my rash guards and my belly's all out and you know i i get it you know there are times where i won't go to no gi because i'm ashamed of the fact that i'm oh my god i'm spilling yeah. on my fucking you know outfit here where my gi doesn't fit properly yeah, you know, but that's on me, and I know it. And yeah. and if I go to class and someone fucks with me about it, 
I understand. That's what's coming my way. I earned it. Yeah. But I also keep in mind too, and, and I've said this to to you know a few people recently. People who and I know I get kind of aggressive in, in, in this sense of like, you know, I can fuck you up type mentality, but it's like the people who can beat my ass aren't the ones that are gonna be talking shit. Yeah. You know, those are the people that are just like, okay, whatever the fuck. The people who can't beat my ass are the ones that are going to have something to say from a distance. <laughs> so there's also that. Um, but I always feel like, you know, going out in public, you know, just understanding, look, you're out in public. And, and you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, you know, if you go out wearing a Princess Peach outfit and it, it's tight fitting and, and, you know, you're a heavy set human. And then, you, you know, you get home, you're like, well, you know, why were they fucking with me? Mm -hmm. it's like because the world is a shitty place unfortunately unfortunately correct so um, you know there's that aspect to it yeah i will say though you know having having met you and then you know knowing that it's been a few months th since then and i know at least for a while there you were definitely trying to do better um i i would not i would call you at least dad bod plus because it's not like it's not you're 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 in shape, but I'm you got the thickness. Now. Yeah, well, you got the thi you got the thickness in the middle. That's what she said. Um, but like like comparatively, like I, I'm like, and just speaking for myself, I am fatter than I've ever been. Like I'm heavier than I've ever been, and I'm fatter than I've ever been. And like I know that I've got issues with being inactive, like especially since I got hurt. You know, it you know now that I'm going through therapy, trying to fix all that you know things are getting a little bit better i'm a lot more active than i was um and hopefully i'll get to a point where i can actually really get my ass back in the gym without causing myself further Im injury you know because i do and i do f know that i feel better when i work out and obviously if i lose weight which you know i can do like if i literally just do intermittent fasting and just try a little bit i'll drop 10 pounds in a week or two without really doing anything you know it's just I, I can kick my metabolism up fairly fast as long as i'm not just sitting on my ass on the couch nine hours a day you know so I, you know i deal with image issues all the time for myself i mean like i didn't realize how big i had gotten until i saw myself in profile on camera and like because it's, it's all coming forward for the most part but then also I noticed in my own shadow, I was like, oh, you can see my roles in the fucking shadow. I was like, okay, now I have to feel bad about myself because I let myself get this bad, you know? And be, I, I think I, I have the mentality of I recognize my fault in how I got here. I just need to give myself credit on how to get out because that's the part where I get lazy or I get stuck in the mindset of I'm not going to do anything about this. I'm, I'm just fat as shit. This is how it's going to be. Right. But I know better. Like I, I literally said, I know better. It's like I could skip a few meals. You know, I can li literally fast every day, you know, for 16 hours, which isn't that hard for me. Cause if I just don't eat until I get home from work, you know, from so I eat dinner the night before and I don't eat anything. That's about sixteen to fourteen to sixteen hours, no problem. As long as I don't put anything shitty in me, which is the biggest problem I have. You know, the biggest problem I have: carbs and sugars. Realistically, and that's hey, look, how do I get fat as shit? <laughs> lots of carbs, lots of sugars, not enough activity. <laughs> it's also why my fucking liver is fucked up. That's why my fucking uh, most of my blood work is okay, but that's why I'm pre-diabetic. You know. Um, though realistically, if you're not diabetic, I think you're technically classified as pre-diabetic. <laughs> as the joke goes, it's like, isn't everyone technically pre-diabetic except for the people who have diabetes? <laughs> My uh, doctor told me I was pre-diabetic. I said okay, and as soon as I left the appointment, I went straight to the Seven Eleven and bought two honey buns and yeah. said, "Gun the boat towards the rocks. Let's rock, baby." Yeah. So the question is, do you eat one in the car and then save the other one till you can get to a microwave for like a few seconds? Or do you eat both in the car? No, they're both done before I get to the house, dude. <laughs> That's why I said I, the joke. This is, a, this, is the, this is on the next questionnaire, by the way. Next questionnaire, if you buy two honey buns, how do you wait? Or do you eat both right then? 
if if there's a stoplight, they're it, gone. It's, it's not gonna make you. But if I if I don't hit any lights, yeah. one makes it home. Yeah, one not in the door, but it makes it home. It's like we're sitting in that <laughs> oh, no, driveway. No, I, I have to park. Yeah, I guess that's probably true. Um, but I, I think the the way in in this particular thing and. The, here's the hard part of course having been bullied you know for a good chunk of my uh school years f- for stupid shit by the way like really stupid shit i wasn't bullied because i was fat or anything else like that um i was bullied because m- my mom made a passing comment and i shared that comment with the wrong people and then they took that and just ran with it um and uh that and fucked with me for a long time um until i finally until the school gave me the ability to report the shitheads who were doing it like this is the beginning of the anti-bullying movement you know so mm-hmm. if somebody fucked with me i could tell the teacher they instantly got ridden up sent to the fucking principal for it because they were like done with this shit you know and this is back before kids were fucking killing themselves every other thursday because they got bullied you know at school Back then it was rare. Now it's like, oh fuck! There's another TikTok about kids who are about to go kill themselves. You know, it's this fucked up reality we live in now. <clears throat> but that being said, you know, and you know what's funny is when when Bobby told this story, my I immediately pictured this person, um, and my thought was, why Peach? I mean, that's a perfectly good Bowser situation. I mean, like you could make an amazing Bowser costume. I get you want to be the cute princess and shit, but you could be the fucking king ass lizard dragon man, and it would just work, in my opinion. It was like play play to your strengths. It's like I get everybody wants to be pretty, you know, one way or another. Look, let's be honest here. Sometimes you look pretty. <laughs> Sometimes you say it out loud in the mirror when no one else is around. Oh, you're muted motherfucker i was fucking with the mute button and then i was like nope let me just turn that back off yep and it turned back on i said i I say that shit around the house all the time yeah i say i'm beautiful yeah exactly exactly and so like and don't get me wrong it is it is great to have a positive self-image except in the weird cases of delusion like if you can make what you got work in a positive way great if you don't give a fuck and you just said fuck it if you don't love me how i am then fuck off you're a piece of shit and i'm awesome you know it's like i think that's we've hit this weird delusion where people like tess holiday make the cover of what vanity fair or whatever it was and then swimsuit or whatever it was yeah you know she's like i forget how big like 350 pounds or something like that she weighs more than me she's gigantic you know and it and realistically if she like she's not a bad looking woman but it that was like, hey, if you are massively obese, you can now be a swimsuit model on on the cover where the skinny bitches used to be, as it were. And go ahead. So there's a there's a thing to that though too that that gets real funky mm-hmm. because the, the body positive movement becomes this thing, and it becomes kind of the low hanging fruit because yes. it's like. Oh, well, I can be accepted for being me, which that you you should not ever feel like you can't be yourself. Yeah, I agree and, with that part. And the thing is, though, it's like, OK, now you're unhealthy, though. And now they're promoting this on magazines. But it was, it was Cosmo. Shape? It was Cosmo. Uh, Cosmo. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, this is healthy. And it's like, that is fucking not healthy. This is the furthest exactly. thing from healthy. That, that's where I was going to go with it. You got people. I remember this popping up all over uh, the jujitsu forums and stuff. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are very much, you know, um, in, in the vein of like, oh, you know, body positive. You know, you got to get, you know, got to be encouraging about it. Yes. But at the same time, too, though, it's like unhealthy is unhealthy. Yeah. You can't. You know, yes. You, you can't can be, promote it. And unhealthy, too. Yeah. You know, you can be. But, yeah. I know plenty of people who are who are quote unquote in shape and are massively unhealthy because of how they got there. Because, yeah, because, yeah. because one thing is people think that just because you're fit quote unquote means that you're actually healthy It's like, no, you might be massively dehydrated. Your kidneys are probably on the verge of failing. God knows mm-hmm. what, what kind of pills you're taking to get your heart rate up, you know, artificially so you can burn calories 
And then also, if you listen to this asshole on YouTube with his fake ass ads about how you can lose weight and not actually do these crazy workouts, fuck that guy. That's all a giant scam. I looked into it. But um, <clears throat> but the, the idea that big can be beautiful, but also big can be life threatening. Mm -hmm. And if you are promoting life threatening behavior, and I don't mean jujitsu, I mean overeating to the point of you know if you lose a limb, the scale wouldn't even change, you know, or you know they have to use a um livestock scale whenever you go to the doctor that's probably not a good thing or if you're on my 600 pound life like all of these things and and that's what i look at you know because you know the wife and i deal with this like often you know we both are what would be considered technically speaking morbidly obese because just just how we're built and that's just how big we are in reality you know and it fucking sucks but something can be done it's not just eh, fuck it you know but it's just I think, it, sorry go ahead no because i was just gonna say is like i think that there's like with this princess peach situation you know i made the joke about about being bowser because you know big rotund thing you know but the idea that also do something that makes sense that could work but also, if the if the outfit is like extremely tight, that's another thing. You know, make something that does fit your your body type. Just that's just general advice. You know, you know, don't as for because I've been having to wear a back brace at work lately, and it feels like a fucking girdle. It's like, mm -hmm. believe me, it's like it's like it's nowhere near as tight as what some of these women will cram themselves into at the Renaissance Festival. Um, which, by the way, speaking of uh, spillover, but um. <sighs> I got distracted. What was I saying? Um, so uh, the only time I go to Renfest, yes, is for that. That's yeah. the only reason I go. It's like, oh, what's this? Yes, I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, go on Pirates Weekend. It's fucking amazing. So, um, but uh, the idea of play play to your strengths. Don't. I don't know how to say it. It's like, don't make put yourself into a situation that people would bully you. But do something that you feel that you're enjoying and having fun with. Does that make sense in a weird way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's the thing. It makes sense to us. Yeah. I know, again, there are going to be people, you know, that may possibly hear this and say, again, you're victim blame. And it's like, well, to a small degree, yeah, maybe that's what it takes, though, because, again, you're it, it's you're like. It's shaming. It's that's what I was talking about. It's like, do you yeah. remember? Do you remember when Bert and Tom were fat shaming each other to help themselves yes. lose weight, and it fucking worked? Mm -hmm. Like, but that was, but that's two friends using their audience on Instagram to bully each other to, into losing weight because they were both massively overweight. Unfortunately, Tom had to go and break half his body to get there. Um, <laughs> but it is what it is. But he also was so unhealthy that it allowed for him to get that injury that literally changed his fucking life. Whereas Bert uh, is orange as fuck and, and fat right now. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, by the way, the yeah, machine out on it. Netflix now for anybody who didn't see oh, it. Yeah, yes, I, it's in my queue. Okay, good. Um, I, I have it. I have it on my Amazon forever, but you know, it's on it's on uh, Netflix now. But but the idea that we we do, as a society we got rid of the idea of shame, positive shaming, I should say, mm -hmm. shaming with a purpose, not shaming in the idea of it, it's it's almost like slut shaming wasn't necessarily a bad thing because frankly. <laughs> There's some big fucking sluts out there who should probably have words said to them. It's like, because also dangerous behavior that could lead to mm -hmm. health problems, you know, also you know, abuser argument, shamings, you know, the, the argument, you know, of course, is always from that side or anyone that's defending it is, you know, let them live their lives, which again, no, I get that. I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But also it like, let's say I, I say Shulky. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love you, man. You 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 need to fucking get on the Aerodyne bike or something. Fucking, okay. you know, burn some, you know, it, but it's not out of hate. I, you know, it's like, dude. That's concern. I yeah. I, you know, it's concern. And the thing is, people like to shift that and, and turn, you know, people into villains because they're concerned, you know, because it's like, oh, well, live your life. Now, yeah. also what goes with that, too, is let's take an actress or a singer, Adele, mm. who loses weight and then 
People get mad. The community turns on her. They're like, oh, you yeah. left us. Yeah. And it's like, well, wait a minute. She did this to better herself. Like, you, you all, did you all love her music or did you all love her because she was fat with you and could yes. sing her ass off too? It was, rep- it, it, it was, it was representation. And that's why they got mad. They're like, someone who is fat like us is this massively talented. It gives me hope for my fat ass, you know? And that's is, not being mean, but that's that's the mentality of of the people who got mad at her. And by the way, I'm not that big a fan of of uh, skinny Adele. I miss I miss I miss healthy healthy thick Adele, because yes. there was a time where she was definitely more more overweight, but then she slimmed down a little, and like there was a good healthy thickness going on with Adele. And and it's fine that she she got skinnier, especially if it was for health reasons, because hell she had to sit out for a while because she fucked her throat up. Or her vocal cords, I should say. <laughs> I shouldn't say throw it. That's a different story. Um, but uh, uh, but you know, it, it it is weird that it turned into that. It became reverse bullying by the people who were bullied. And like people who yeah. felt bullied then became bullies because this this idol of theirs. And this could be a lot of different people because there's other people. Uh, mm-hmm. Rebel what's, Wilson. What, thank you. I literally how do you, just quit reading my mind. Um, and also. You know the funny thing is, I don't think she looks that good skinnier. Like, it, yeah. I think she she looks weird. Now Kelly Osbourne, Kelly Osbourne and Jack Osbourne both lost a yes. lot of weight, and it bettered them. I mean, Kelly's still thickish, but like compared to where she let herself balloon up to, you know, drugs, alcohol, fucking depression, all that kind of stuff. Being Ozzy's kid will do that to you. Um, but you know, it's and it's funny oh, is good for her. Oh, you looked her up. You haven't seen her in a bit. No. Yeah, because uh, she was she lost weight when she was on one of those uh, talk shows with the uh, clucking hens. Um, yeah, I don't remember if she was on the View or not. It might no, no, because Sharon was on the View, right? Yeah, and then it became but, yeah, and then, knew, and then the talk the later. I think she, I think Sharon or somebody else started the talk later, which is a stupid fucking name for a show. Hey, which talk <laughs> show are you going to be on? The talk? Yeah, I know which show. <laughs> it's like it turns into an SNL skit, um, but it it because the funny thing is, it, it it becomes this weird thing. You know, you remember the whole uh, impossible beauty standards fucking nonsense that we had that we yes. now we now can't have fucking comic book women and men who look absolutely ridiculous or voluptuous in whatever way. Um, you know it. it it, it that was the most absurd aspect of this it was like we can't look like that it's like yeah it's a fucking cartoon character what are you complaining yeah. about it's impossible like that's why we look at this because yeah, it's, uh, that's for yeah. entertainment yeah. it's not for us to yeah. aspire to yeah you weren't supposed to aspire to it and then kim kardashian literally decided to make herself look like a 90s fucking comic book superhero or superheroine i should say cinch cinch waist giant tits giant ass um, and also I'll say this, like, that's probably the other end of the fucking spectrum of like, just making yourself odd for some fucking reason or for fame or like, if you look at all of the Kardashians since they were young, all of them have gotten so much work done. They do not look like the same people. It's fucking I, nuts. I put up a post. I want to say probably around this time last year that showed them all before Yes. And after the family shot. Yes. Yes. It's It's like like glamour shot. It's like that fucking family glamour shot where it's everybody and the fucking eight nineties background fucking shit or whatever it was. And dude, like, okay. If you even go back to what's the big one, Chloe, Chloe, Chloe's OJ, Uh, OJ's daughter, right? OJ's kid. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, not anymore. I mean, you've seen, you've seen her, right? She doesn't look the same either. She still has a head like a Rottweiler. Though. She has a head like a yeah. Rottweiler, but the rest of her is, you know, Kim fucking eight years ago. Like she's, it, she, and she's hot. Don't get me look, wrong. I, I gotta pull. Like I, I, I think that's the one I don't like. I think that's the one I like the least. I hate Courtney. Cor- Courtney's fat. my least. I think I like Courtney. Okay, so that's Courtney. I think I like Courtney, but I'm not sure why. But I just feel like she's okay, short you know and evil. Like that might be it. 
Ooh, I love that. She, she's short, evil, and she had like her jet black hair for like the longest time. So she probably dude, reminds dude. you of something. Speaking all my words, right okay? Now. Yeah, because Chloe, Chloe's the Cloverfield monster, but like, like even even when she was bigger, whoop de doo, she wasn't ever what I would consider obese. Like she was just no. big. Like she's a big fucking girl to begin with, and now her, she literally doesn't look like the same fucking person. It's weird. And that's people who can't accept how they look. You know, it's kind of it's kind of the other way or the other end of the spectrum of, of what we're talking yeah. about. It's like you can't accept how you look to such a degree that you make yourself something else. You you like ascribe a beauty standard from something and literally mutate yourself to look like that thing. And then on the other end of the spectrum is too much acceptance to not even trying anymore. Like and and I think that yeah. we we used to have a weird semi healthy middle ground for a lot of people, but because we either have the insane beauty standards of of IG or OnlyFans, or you know, and then we have the opposite end of uber laziness, but that's being worshipped for a completely different reason. Like you're so beautiful, it's great. You don't have to change anything about you. You're great, yes, queen, or whatever the fuck they say. <laughs> Um, I can't do that voice. My nose is stuffed up, but the, but the idea that, uh, it's like, no, it's like, and, and I'm saying no to either end, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you don't have to be this, you don't have to be the ridiculous beauty standards. You don't like, you, you just don't have to, some people will have that. And then some people will spend lots of money to be that you don't have to be there. But you also don't have to overcorrect the other direction to be accepted. It's like, when did we stop just accepting people that are normal shaped? What happened there? Did we did we lose that somewhere? We had a conversation on Colompton Beer Club, Steve and I, a couple weeks ago, maybe something like that, where he had, he had sent me a video of these women who were talking to a sh uh, show host and. Um, he was basically telling the women to the whatever know, podcast. Probably. Um, for all where they're that. all sitting around the table and like the two dudes are over here. That situation. I'm, maybe I'm I'm not sure because like you know, I was kind of like like half watching and half like paying attention to other shit. Hmm. But uh, the dudes basically asking them to you know name a female celebrity that they think is attractive or that they're compared to, mm -hmm. you know, what would you give them on a scale one through 10? And what would you scale yourself? Now, Steve oh, sent this yeah. to me and he's basically saying, no, all these women are delusional, you know? So I, I will argue from the other side of, of that argument against what he's saying. I get what, what he's, he's getting at, but also too, it's like, okay. So those women aren't necessarily unattractive. Yeah. By any means. But for the one chick to say Rihanna's a nine and that she's a 10, it's like, okay, yes, you're delusional. Relax. Bring your shit down. But yeah. that's also, too, you're saying, what do you perceive yourself? So, I yeah. mean, that's not, maybe that's not so much a delusion thing as much as like, yeah, maybe I think I'm a fucking 10. I'm fucking hot as shit. Yeah. Um, you know, so there is kind of that weird line there where, you know, having that belief in yourself and, and thinking, like, look, man, I, you know, I feel good about myself. But then there's also the other side, too, of you know, there are beautiful women out there mm -hmm. that, you know, think they look hideous. And then you got these bras looking like Shrek, you know, running around thinking they the shit. And it's like, but the thing is, if they feel like, hey, I am, you know, a fucking 10, good for you for being confident in yourself. But, you know, I, I think, you know, when it comes to like, based on whose standard you yeah. know is the question it's like if, if that's your own standard like for me you know i, I like a good middle ground mm -hmm. to be quite honest you know the five with know, the personality I, I, fucking right doggy <laughs> go back to um, that going back to our conversation from last week I, so i left that one off of Colompton. Okay. I, I took a bunch of the questions i left that one off for now that that one's gonna come back just because we got we got kind of heated on the Muhammad Ali versus Bruce Lee, it it, it got extremely. I, I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to hear it. Um, like, uh, like, but but basically, you know, the whole thing is like, you know, depending on what your standard is, you know, 
you know, there's th that point as well. But when it comes to the whole ideal, again, of the over acceptance of, you know, being unhealthy, whether it's one end of the spectrum of being obese or the other end of, you know, taking low Kim and turning to whatever the fuck she is now, okay, you know, because yeah. that's a big thing. You or know? Nicki Minaj yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and, and sorry, I don't mean to, to cut you off oh, there, ahead. but no, because you, you're not you're right. It's but the idea the idea that like, how do you see yourself? But the problem is, it's like some people would be totally objective, you know, because we, we know that a lot of people can be objective, but most people are totally subjective. Like, so I'm rating myself or whatever on a scale of you got to base it off something most of the in this case a lot of instagram i mean we all know instagram is for tits and ass at this point it's you know and, and some uh jujitsu uh videos but uh for the most part oh, for it's, sure. it's for the most part it's tits and ass and the crazy part is um it, it's just you when you brought that up i had forgotten about that on the whatever podcast where they literally had them rate themselves and then rate someone else You're just like and then you the thing is it's a, in this case females rating themselves, but then they don't ask in in the situation because I bet most of these girls were single. It's like, what does your man think you are? Because however you see is in your head, and a lot of times people don't see themselves the way their their significant other does. If they have someone super important or someone who does care about them much, like you know you were talking about earlier, you know, telling me I'm fat and I need to get on a treadmill, um, but you care, so it's fine. So in the in the case of and I would hope you would tell me the same thing like Dante look man yeah. I, I saw that last technique video no, I, I I'm gonna, your partner no, no I'm gonna tell it's like Dante you're starting to look like a mat you need to work on it it's like you need to get the mats off of you um, so uh, I'm gonna save that too so but the idea that maybe you you live up to a standard that is entirely in your head. And as I wish we could have got Joe in on this because I know about with his uh, body dysmorphia and the way he applies it to his uh, bodybuilding, working out stuff like that. Like sometimes you, it's like he can absolutely not care and then he can be completely and utterly obsessed with like making sure this one little tiny muscle is coming out. And like, and frankly, bodybuilders in general have all of that damage in their head. They literally, where they get so obsessed and all this other stuff. And that's another really fucking weird part of this spectrum. They're like, they, cause that's another version of like, okay, you've pushed yourself beyond acceptable and beyond normal to a point of absurdity. But for what, you know, and that could be all the plastic surgery in the world that could be fucking working out 17 hours a day to look like some ridiculous roided out monster. Uh, shout out to Sean's cousin. Um, because he does that shit. And he says, like, he does so much roids. He looks fantastic, but you can see every vein in his body, but you can't see his fucking dick in the Speedo. Uh, so, um... I think that's the goal. Yeah, it's like, to basically not have to tuck. It's like, it's just so shrunken, you don't even have to tuck anymore. So, um... But I think I think we're in this weird world, and you probably would agree that like it's accept accept everything, no matter what the fuck it is, accept it, and and prop it up instead of think about, analyze, and I don't I don't even know the word that I'm looking for to to go like fix is not the word because not everything needs to be fixed. But if you analyze it and you see something that could be wrong, like you said, you know, telling an overweight person, hey, man, I think you should probably, you know, you've gotten pretty big. But if it comes to another aspect of it, you know, some some other thing that just has pushed so far into absurdity, um, like if you go to fucking Twitter, you can see a whole lot of fucking absurdity being passed around. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, okay, what the fuck? But why why have we pushed so far into this? Nope, it's all good. Let it all happen. It's like, instead of... Remember when we used to talk this shit through and people had fucking rhyme and reason? <clears throat> Part of my feeling towards it, too, and, and I'll waver sometimes. You know, sometimes, you know, we'll sit here and have these debates here at home. Uh, but more often than not, because I'm on social media fucking damn near all the time, 
and and I play with the game of if I don't like something, I keep scrolling by. Yeah. Like instead of going to comments, I don't need the comments. I can just keep scrolling if I don't like it. And that's kind of how I look at a lot of these situations too with people. If I see somebody and it's like, Ugh, I don't like that, but you know what? Why do I fucking care? Like, or I'll look at it and say, Hey, I don't want to be that, you know, that they, they, that's a big part of how I look at a whole lot of stuff now, whether it be parenting, whether it be, you know, my body, whether it be, you know, my, my work ethic, it's like, I don't want to be that. Yeah. I, I just, you know, so there also becomes the ideal again of like, why should I care what that person's doing? Because that I think is a big thing of the whole acceptance movement mm -hmm. is it went from why should I care to, well, I don't want to offend. Um, yeah, I don't want to offend. And I think I, I believe you're entirely right about that. And I think it was the overcorrection from the and this goes back to the everyone gets a trophy days um i think it's, it started there in the fucking mid 90s or whenever that happened I, i'm i'm blaming that around 1997 is when that shit started if i had to yeah guess. i was gonna say it feels like uh 96 is where it started creeping in 97 it got real heavy yeah and by the time 99 hit it was our world yeah so it's uh, everyone gets a trophy because no one can be offended by being called a loser it's like no bitch you didn't win you fucking lost. Being a loser can do two things for you. It can bring you to greatness or make you change in a direction that you can win. Because whether it's stay here and get good or find other thing to get good at because this isn't going to work. But if you just tell everyone, no, you're perfect. You're great. No matter what the fuck is wrong in the situation, they'll never know that there could be something better. Being lied to about how good or great you are doesn't help you. There's no, there's actually no reason to finish that sentence. It does not help you. It's like, and I think yeah. we're stuck in that mindset now. There is kind of a level. I, I agree with you. There's kindness, but and there's then there's also there, there's a level though, like because I'm thinking about coaching wise. Sure. Because like having coached the kids and everything, um, in jujitsu and just to be quite honest, my kids fucking sucked. They weren't good. And, and that's the thing. Um, you know, I remember growing up you know, playing football. I remember senior year, we lost to a high school that we hadn't lost to in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember coach was furious. He let us have it when we got back. We shouldn't have lost. We lost by one point at the last second. That that's, those are the losses that burn me up the most because you know, any one thing could have gone one way or the other. It could have been a fumble earlier. It could have been a drop pass earlier, whatever. But, yeah. you know, think back to that. And then I think about my kids who we went to this one tournament and all of my kids got fucking waxed. Like, it, it, it was it was brutal. And I remember having to talk to them. And it wasn't even about, you know, the participation trophy or, like, you know, anything like that. Yeah, like I said, it's the kindness. It's like, look, I had to let them know, like, you know, th this was fucking bad. This was not good. Yeah. But I didn't put that on them. No. Like, we as coaches didn't prepare them, and they knew coming back on that next practice on Monday, we were getting at it. And and they understood. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's still the, you know, the reminder of letting them know, like, look, we know you worked hard. We you, just didn't you get fucking this sucked, one. Yeah. But you worked hard. <clears throat> yeah. But that doesn't mean you get a trophy. You yeah. don't get a reward. You didn't get your participation trophy because you played the game. You get you get an extra workout or two this week because you lost, but you did good. Yeah. And in that case, yes, you have to reward progress or at least acknowledge progress, especially if someone does do good. Yeah. Obviously, reinforce that because like now it's like reinforce everything because someone might cry sometime eventually. But then the thing is, you don't know the shit they are crying about because all the stuff you thought that they should be avoiding to cry about, you don't do. So now they've got other emotional damage you have no fucking clue about. You know, so and and uh, I wanted to go back to what we were saying a minute ago about uh we went from the the why should I care? We went okay, so we went from why, and and maybe I think it fluctuates a little bit, but it went from do you, I don't care if you're not, not fucking with me, to not giving a fuck enough 
to allow so much to slide. So it's like we went from caring too much, right, to why should I care, to not actually caring but putting on the smiley face like you do. It's like, so like, or like the problem is I think we all went to complete and utter silent judgment. And, and I think that is also not a net positive for humanity to live in silent judgment because sometimes you just got to fucking tell someone like if you're working, if you're working a fucking cubicle job and the person that's in the cube next to you hasn't worn deodorant in the last 19 days or showered, (laughs) Fucking say something because I don't give a shit how many fucking candles you light. You can only cover up fucking a half a month's worth of BO with so much. It's like, wipe you your ass, really take a BO. shower. Yeah, you can't fucking deal with that. You got to fucking say something. You don't have to be mean. And that's, that. you know, it kind of comes down to a conversation we had a long time ago here about just don't be a dick. It's like, because yeah. you can give someone a critique whether it's of their clothes, of their weight, of the car they drive, if you're going to be like that. Um, PT Cruisers are cool. Um, <laughs> fuck all of you. You fucking pick up my car. Um, but like the idea that we've let it go so far that we've stopped legitimately caring about the person and we care about the idea. It's like the idea around the person is what we actually care about. And then we care so much more about how we look about caring about them. It's a fucking virtue signaling bullshit. And I'm fucking tired of it personally. It's like, no, fucking say something. If shit is fucked up somehow, say something. Like, it maybe it's just a tap on the shoulder. Hey, um, I can see your asshole. You might want to actually pull up your fucking drawers um and and honestly jeremy you should probably get the toilet paper out of there i don't i don't know how you fucking got so much in there stuck but i can see all of it in fact everyone over there can see wash your too. stanky ass wash your stanky ass jeremy uh but the idea that like now it would just be like nope i'm not gonna say anything i'm just gonna smile and let them live their life and then go talk silently with my buddies but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's like we've gotten to this point in our society where, you know, we lost, like you said, that healthy middle ground. Mm-hmm. It's like at one point, you know, we just kind of lived. Those, you know, I think, you know, I want to say like early 90s, late 80s, there was the silent judgment period where I would say early, like, oh. I would say 90s. It wasn't silent. Uh, people were calling people out. Well, before that, yeah, early nine, early nineties, like I, I would say, like around ninety three, when I got to high school, mm-hmm. I feel like that's when it really started becoming like people just spoke their mind, hmm. and there was a thing Maybe. to that though, where it's like you know, speaking your mind became this empowerment thing, which is fine, you know, yeah, say what's there, but like you said, don't be a dick about it. Mm-hmm. And I remember working with this young lady, um, in two thousand one, or no, I'm sorry, two thousand two, and. I remember she, we were talking about the movie Remember the Titans. Love that movie. And, you know, she was, like, talking about how she watched with a bunch of guys. I'm pretty sure they, you know, did more than just watch the movie. But um, So you're saying and, they were lined up behind the couch? Like the guys were lined up? Absolutely. Yeah. She, she was the type. Um, but, and she was, like, making this point of saying, like, oh, you know, all these guys were, like, watching this movie. And they were so, like, you know sensitive about it i just you know called him out on it. it's like i'm not a bitch i just speak my mind and it's like yeah that that's you know but sometimes <laughs> yeah the the disguise of the disguise of being a bitch and just speaking your mind yeah and, and, and i knew too many of those humans back then where it was like oh, yeah. i just speak my mind i'm not a bitch it's like no actually you're right you're not you're, a bitch you're a cunt yeah you're doing both you know? yeah it's like no actually you're accomplishing both i appreciate that and by the way before we get too far i have to i have to put this in there um she was just uh she was enjoying their entire o line <laughs> yeah she that was, was the, the o that was that was line. the joke i was either way it's a um, it's a football and porn joke. 
Porn ball. He gets it. <laughs> um, like, the, the thing is about people, though, is like, you know, when it comes to this whole acceptance, mm-hmm. there has to be a healthy line to it. Yeah. Because, again, there can be a line of saying, look, if you want to do this, do that. That, you know, that's your prerogative. Yeah. But also, too, don't make it my problem. Very much don't so. make it something I have to, you know, carry the burden of. It's like, you know, if, if you're weighing 300 pounds, you're like, hey, can you give me a ride somewhere? No, that's fucking bad on my fucking car. <laughs> Not too, at all. Sorry. There's too many potholes between here and there. You're going to wreck my suspension, <laughs> fat ass. OK, like, so and yeah. and you know what? And I've told the story here before about my uh, my friend Cameron back in the day where, you know, he was a he was a huge bitch. Um, you know, I, I literally called him fat. Like that was the name I called him. I said, "What up, fat?" You know, not like not like Joe Biden does, but you know, I was literally making sure he knew he was massively overweight and should do something about it, because it was it was meant to be good natured bullying, literally. Like I'm I was fat too. He was just ridiculous. It was just like, dude, and and he chose to drive small cars. All of this should be shamed. Like I'm sorry. It's like no. It's like you are literally. Like teetering, your fucking little uh, Suzuki Samurai is fucking listing down the fucking road because you weigh too fucking much. I mean, and then you know, unfortunately, he got in a bad accident and ended up losing weight because he was in the hospital for so long. So, um, so I mean, there was that, and then he had to go on a limited diet for a while because his uh, stomach was fucked up from the accident, so he literally couldn't have nothing but liquid for a while. But the boy would eat fucking. A- I remember back then we would do land parties and he would like scarf down, I think something like 15 or 20 fucking Taco Bell and I talk about Jack in the Box tacos and then like fucking 20 nuggets and everything else in like a two hour sitting, you know, and a whole fucking two liter of whatever and be like, gee, I wonder why Cameron's so fat. No self-control and also massively low self-esteem coming from an abusive family and all this other nonsense. It's like, it's weird. It's almost as though we know what triggers a lot of these behaviors, but we choose to ignore it and not help people anymore. We just allow the worst possible behaviors from people under the guise of, oh, well, it's nicer this way. It's like, it's nicer to watch other people cause harm to themselves than to just say, hey, dude, I fucking care about you. I honestly think you have a problem. You know, I was like, what, why don't think we do interventions anymore? We just send people to fucking San Francisco or L.A., wherever they're allowed to shit on the ground and as they're going around doing drugs. I think San Fran definitely has, like, a lot of shit on the ground, but I think L.A. is starting to They, they take, both take have a lot. Notes. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot. I think people like to shit at the top of the hill and see how far it'll go. But it, it's like, but at least San Francisco actually had the shit tracker. Um, so, yes. yeah, which is hilarious and terrible. At the same fucking time, it's, it's it's fucking so bad, but um, I I think that all of that like shit, fuck California is the perfect example of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Full acceptance, zero shame, everything is allowed, and it's just like maybe we should take two steps back on on what we're doing with society, and go, hmm. Maybe 150,000 homeless people in one county is probably too much. Maybe we should help these people in their behavior. Nope, nope, it's too mean. Just let them do what they want to do. I mean, we, we started out with fat people, but it actually kind of goes with all of these horrible behaviors of, in our society. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of the acceptance movement. And again, I'm not saying, you know, we, we shouldn't be kind to people. I'm not saying we shouldn't no, care yeah. about people. You know, but there is a line that that comes out there. I mean, it's like like um, you were saying early, you know, earlier with the virtual signaling. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing that, you know, I had to, you know, kind of think about a little bit when I post my mental health, you know, stuff. Which, by the and, way, uh, what suicide prevention awareness this month? Or is, yes. it, or is it men's mental health? Or that was uh, a month no, ago. men's mental health is June. That was June. You know, yeah. took, I'm trying to remember because you, know, you put, we share it with pride. Well, yeah, because <laughs> it's a fair point. But because you you do post, you've been posting at least daily about that for for September, and that that is a that is a big fucking point of it too. 
because I think more people now, like I mentioned earlier, it's like, you know, I made the joke. It's like people didn't commit suicide that much from bullying back when we were kids. It was rarity. Now it's almost like my kid literally survived school despite the bullying is like the, the fucking thing on the bumper sticker now. It's like. Well, I also think to, you know, thinking, you know, back to the 90s before we really had the access that we have now, mm. you know, we, it, you know, we have more uh, information availability. Yeah. So we're going to hear more about it now versus back then. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm sure the numbers are still much higher now than they were then. And social media is a big fault of that, yeah. you know, from what I understand. And Canada. So, Canada's pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, Canada. Yeah. I mean, it's it's literally part of their healthcare now. But you know, I had to think about that when I was, you know, when I put up some posts. I always have to think is like, am I doing, you know, as I put these things up, saying, you know, care for others, mm -hmm. listen to others. Am I doing that as well, or am I just putting this up here to say, hey, I'm one of the good guys? Because that's a lot of stuff too. Yeah. To say, oh well, that fat person over there. Uh, well, go ahead and, you know, you go, girl, you know, and hey, I'm a good yes, guy now. Queen. <laughs> yes, queen, you know, and then you go behind closed doors and like, oh, my God, she's like she can barely fit into the fucking moo moo. Yeah. Um, but there there is it just be so like much. <laughs> so so <laughs> there's so, so much to all of it, though, where you have to really ask. It's like, so why yeah, can't we just find that middle ground and chill. Yeah. And, and yeah, I do. I definitely get your point there. Definitely the the. Am I just posting about this because, or am I posting about this because it's something I really care about? And am I actually doing the thing that I'm signaling? So I think I think there's nothing inherently wrong with sharing the awareness. By all means, there you know that absolutely needs to be. I mean, it's something that needs to be made more aware of, because as we already said, nobody really gives a fuck anymore. It's like interpersonal relationships don't exist like they used to because like even with people you call friends half the time you're still holding back a lot of the shit inside and like it used to be that you could get close enough with somebody you would just talk about shit you know work things out before it ever got to that level now it's like well shit I wish he had said something and now I know that that has always sort of been the thing there's always the regret when someone commits suicide you know we've had suicide in our family um due to drugs or mental illness or whatever. And, but the idea is like, now it's just like, Oh, I wish, I wish we could have done something. It's like, did you ever fucking talk to him? Or did you just make cool. another fucking post about it? And this isn't obviously directed at you, but the yeah. point is we see that shit all the time. We see the fake caring on online. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might come it, from a good place, but it's the inaction that yeah. goes with the post not doing actually doing the thing and and even with the posts it's like you know you could put up a post about whatever yeah. and just kind of call it a day um like and I, i've made it a point on my posts and plenty of times someone actually reposted uh from yesterday what i put up um and they made a comment on their uh in their stories about it so i sent them a message mm -hmm. it was just like hey man i'm sorry to hear that you're going through it you know if if you need my ear is here and, and i've i've said that to plenty of people in the comments as well you know you still get people that you know want to call it what it is but the thing is when it comes to any of the other you know other things that we're discussing specifically you know the body positive movement it's like you know again you can say you know i'm all here for body positivity you know you know this is what healthy looks like and da 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 and then it's like okay but you're just also talking about that person as well, calling yeah. a fucking fat cow. It's like, you know, th there's there are these layers to all of it that just it, it's, it's really gross. And like I said, we need to just kind of get back to this point of like care enough to want people to be better. Yeah. But also don't care so much that you feel like you have to be, you know, super accepting of every wrong decision that's made it's like that's why i said you know, that's not caring it's like acceptance is not always caring like no. it can accepting can be kindness obviously it's like but it doesn't mean you care to that degree because 
oh, that's great that they're doing that. And then you just go about your life and you go, never, people don't ask why anymore because they just say, oh, well, the why is obvious. And you're like, is it? Did you talk to the person about what they're going through, whatever it might be? Or did you just sit down and be like, hey, look, I noticed, I, I noticed you put on like 50 pounds in the last month. Is it, is something going on? Are you okay? Everything good? You got, you got a tumor? You know, did, did, uh, did Jeremy knock you up over there with a smelly ass? I mean, like, what happened here? What's going on? You know, it's like, are you, are you okay? And be like, yeah, I'm just putting on weight for a role. I got an acting job. I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. But, it, you know, it's, it looks like you got more than an acting role. It looks like you got a little Debbie role and a few others down there. Um, a couple sushi rolls in there, too, I can see. You know, I thought it was supposed to be good for you, but I can definitely see where it's going. But the idea is... You're trying to be Christian Bale. Yeah, I, that man's insane. Yeah, you know, I talk about impossible Hollywood standards. You get these guys, who, or more women even, who do these ridiculous workouts, or lack thereof, to destroy their bodies to fill a role... And good on them, but that's a fucking sign of mental illness. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's like what well, Christian. Like most of Hollywood is a sign of mental illness. I think if you want to be a part of Hollywood, yes, um, you know it is yeah. what it is. But I think also, you know, in the in the silent judgment is also like silent not silent acceptance in a way. It, not to go off on a on a different tangent, but it's the same thing with the Me Too movement. You know, it's the whole idea of, well, if I say something, this shit going to go like this. Maybe they'll be ashamed if I say that, you know, this happened this way. It's like, it's the reverse. It's like, no, no, no. Shame needs to be applied here. Not to the victim, but to the situation. And it's like, because if you don't bring light to it, even if it's in that way, be like, no, the person who did something bad needs to be held accountable, you know, in that way. But no, it just went, nope, no, we're just not going to talk about it. We're just not going to acknowledge that shit. It's the same. It's, it's, it's a weird weird tangent of the same behaviors it's like i do caring caring through inaction i I do think that kind of even with that and even even in you know the acceptance you know the body positivity thing as well Mm -hmm. most things in general it's like um like case you know like different cases as well because i encounter quite a few women that were super against the me too movement, Mm. and my wife had brought up an interesting point it was like have they any of these women that you know that are against it have they ever encountered you know any some type of sexual assault yeah and i you know i was like i i can i know for a fact two of them at least what they've always put off have not um and you know it's like for them, it, it probably is like, hey, this is too much. We need to stop. Yeah. Whereas there are people like that are literally screaming like, no, we need to step up about it. And as far as body positivity and how it connects, there's like, you know, there are people that, you know, probably don't see anything on social media. So, th- you know, there's some people that are just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, and then you mentioned Lizzo. They're like, who? <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the big girl that can sing like. Who the hmm. fuck is that? You know, she can, so, she can it, play a flute. She can, hey, she can, I, I she can play the hell out of a flute. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't good at the flute, but I, I played the flute. I, I, you know, you're no Lizzo. You're no Lizzo. Yeah. I'm trying. We we can see. Just don't wear that right, fucking hey. yellow suit. Don't wear that yellow fucking. Don't tell me what the fucking. Not don't wear the yellow, yellow unitard to fucking to the role. I think the boys That's will have a word with you. I will wear it to Comic Con next year. Okay, Comic Con, fine. Not to go fucking. Do not wear the yellow unitard to the mat. Fair. All right. All right. Fine. 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 I don't think yellow is your color. Yeah, it's not for me to wear. Not not all. Not not all yellow. Not all yellow. Uh, But yeah, it's like a lot of the stuff too. I think you know, there's some people that are in their own little echo chamber where they don't even know this is a thing going on. Mm So I think there are some people of the mindset of well, like what we're saying, like that healthy balance of like that healthy middle ground of like, look, man, you might want to like, like Filipinos that I know, mm-hmm. they, they see someone they haven't seen in a long time. They're quick to say, oh, you've gained some weight. Yeah. But no, that's no. not them being rude. That's just it's kind of pointing it out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how they talk to each <laughs> like, other. But you're fat. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny is you brought up the Lizzo thing. And I forgot that was another thing they talked about on there. And it was an incredibly good point that Bobby made. And I've heard it before, but the way Bobby put it was was interesting. Was the idea with Lizzo, right? 
acceptance and all these things, Lizzo is beautiful. Go tell your wife she's looking like Lizzo today and see the reaction. <laughs> but prior to that, she would be having the conversation with her friends about how beautiful Lizzo is and, oh, yes, all this other stuff. It's all a fucking farce. And they know it, but nobody wants to fucking call it out because it's seen as mean. And and the thing is, like, just point is like we're at the point where we have to point out the absurdity of of modern life. It's like it there's we we pushed it too far. It's like because we could we, like I said we went we need to go back we need to go back a few steps. What what does that old mean? No 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 take it back go back go back we went too far. You know the old joke is like do yeah. do do no take it back we went too far. Um. <laughs> Uh, it, we're there. We're 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 beyond there. We're literally at the point where it's like, what the fuck is so like? We're so twisted that we think it's kindness to talk about the beauty of someone, and then when someone tells you you're beautiful like that thing, you get mad because you know inside, it's all a lie, and you've been called on that lie now, and then you fucking react, and that's, and, and we see it all the time. Like, you really do. Like, online, you're, it's and it's happening. Well, maybe I see it more. But, like, I see it more and more. And the thing is, you know, I see it, like, some people call me a bully because of some of the things I'll say on my live streams. Not towards people, but towards artists, towards group that, that I'm reacting to, right? But I'm just giving my fucking honest opinion based on what I'm experiencing from it. And then I will hear the kickback from the quote-unquote fans, and it's all the same kind of shit. It's like, it's acceptance because this thing is the shiny. This is the shiny. This is the beautiful. You can't point out that the other side of the shininess is covered in fucking hair and shit. It's like, you know, it's Jeremy's fucking ass crack again. You know, it's... it's Jeremy, get yourself together. Jeremy, God damn it. But uh, the idea is like... But you point it out. If you go, you just start turning it a little bit so they don't see the shiny and they lose their fucking minds because reality, to a degree, like there's there's some subjection, but then obviously objection coming through. And it'd be like, no, you can't point that out to us. It's so fucking mean. And like, but it's like, it, it it's like I said, we, we think that inaction is caring and it's not. Actually, one thing that plucks my nerve i have a really really good friend one of my teammates whenever he has anything to say he always says no offense i get annoyed by it. it's like dude I just say what the fuck you, because i full so offense anyone that knows me knows that i don't get offended i don't get embarrassed i don't it's just because you have to give a fuck yeah. first in order for those things to happen yes so anytime that he says no offense I immediately get annoyed because it's like if you're trying to tell me it's probably something I already know. Yeah. And chances are if I already know it, I don't fucking care. You know, it's I, like I love it. it just, I love it's when it's after they've said something bad and then they oh I mean no offense. It's like yeah. so well, yeah, that yeah, that that's the I think that's worse than the leading with no offense. It's like but but it's also the idea like and, and I say this, you know, it's it's something I try to live with when, when I speak. It's the idea of anything said before the word but means nothing. Because yeah. when you start out with, no offense, but, it's like, okay, well, we know exactly what you fucking mean now, asshole. It's like, just say the offending thing and be like, with all offense. I mean, ultimately, it's like, look, if you got something to say, just say what you got to say. I yeah. mean, and, and it's, again, easier said than done in some cases, but, you know, like when... Steve and I were talking about the, the panel of women, you know, rating themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I say, and it, it might fall into this category of like too accepting is like, I find beauty in everyone mm -hmm. in some way, one way or the other. I mean, like going back to the whole, you know, she's a five, you know, physically, but you know, her personality is a 10. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that's, that's a broad spectrum because I know some broads that, you know, yeah, it is a broad spectrum. <laughs> i think i know what the title of this episode is gonna be get some some people also get upset when i when i say broads it's like whatever i think i think there it's a it's a term of endearment but um you know i know some you know some women that you know are super duper fucking cool like the coolest ever you know and most people look at them like I, I, you know i wouldn't date them it's like well i mean 
good for you. You don't have to. And I think that's another thing, too. It's like, okay, nobody asked you, number one. But number two, I mean, okay, then don't. Like, who cares? I mean, this person's really fucking cool, you know. And and that's part of that, like, finding something good about everyone. Like, when I used to teach and we do our uh, teacher-parent conferences, we would always lead off with something positive about the child. Mm Mm-hmm. Then we come back with the negative, and then we end with something positive. I was literally so going to say, I, you start with something positive, then you say, but no offense. <laughs> it's like, so, uh, you know, Mikey is really, you know, good with his letters, but no offense, his handwriting looks like dog shit, you know. But he's learning from he's Jeremy. With yeah, he's learning from Jeremy too much. <laughs> you know, and the positive here is we don't allow Jeremy back in the school anymore. He smells like shit. He smells like shit. He's still learning. God damn it. I don't, like, look, if your name is Jeremy out there, we're not picking directly on you, but wipe your ass. You probably didn't do a good job. Go check. I, I am. Fuck, get a, fuck get a you bidet. Jeremy. Fuck you, Jeremy. <laughs> I love and accept all Jeremys as they are. I don't like Jeremys because of that fucking Pearl Jam song. <laughs> and that song was fucking awesome. But when I was in eighth grade, there was this one kid at our school named Jeremy, and that song comes out, and everybody like you love Jeremy. Yeah. And Jeremy was a fucking piece of shit. So I was like, man, fuck anyone named Jeremy. And that's kind of where I've been. Don't bring Pearl Jam into, Jam into this. Too. Don't bring no, Pearl no, Jam into this. No, no, I love the song. It's a great, great fucking song. I love Pearl Jam. No, just not Jeremy. So on on one of the next questionnaires, we're gonna have to include like Eddie Vedder. Wait, is Eddie Vedder dead? No, no, he he's the only one left. From, he's still alive. Never mind. I can't include Eddie Vedder. Yes. Damn yeah. it. I was trying. Lane Staley. Fine. I'll throw in Lane Staley. I know he's dead. Yeah. Ooh. I was like, I know he's dead. We'll, we'll throw Lane Staley in the next question. That's a tough one, man. Wasn't he the first of, the, of that, that whole uh, pioneering group of the grunge movement? Not first, but, you know, Allison, Allison Chains was near the front. It was, uh, is it Mother Love Sponge or something like that was the first okay, one? Okay, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, and Nirvana, obviously all of those kind of came out in the same year. But, yeah, I think it was Mother Love Sponge was first, followed by Nirvana, followed by Elsa No, what James. I'm saying, though, as far as, like, the ones who um died. Died. Oh, ooh, I don't know. Did he, No, he died after. He, I'm pretty sure he died after I Cobain. He, I thought he went before Kurt. Time I, to I, Google. Mm. I will Google. Yeah. You keep t- you keep entertaining yeah. the troops. I will Google. Oh yes, now's my time to shine. So I can do this one thing with my fingers. Actually, I can't. My fucking fingers. You, you are actually used to. Now, yeah, I used to do this one thing with my fingers. She really loved it. And then, fucking. Jam oh yeah, dude. He he he, ki- he died in '02. He definitely longer. Than he did. Time. Yeah, I remember. What? I was. I remember. I was fucking out of high school when he died. Why was I under the impression he died way early? Oh, what the fuck was I on? Oh man, I was. I on mean, you, you, I mean, you're you were off by fucking nearly ten years, dude. Fuck off, all right. I don't know a lot of things. Half the time, I make it up. I dude. know. <laughs> like you. That's why the there podcast. were so many parent teacher conferences. <laughs> no, we, we not for that. you. Yeah, we, it was the parents bringing you in to talk about your teaching. No, I do. They really no offense, but <laughs> they're like Dante, sit down. No offense, but our kids are now dumber. Having, having heard class. this, <laughs> why do you keep playing Billy Madison for them every day? They're not learning. Like, yes, they are. They made blue ducks. Like, like, what do you mean they aren't learning? Dude, Jeremy's good at the blue ducks, but he fucking stinks like shit. We sent him home. It was an improvement. He's putting paste all over his face. It's fucking weird. Fucking his his ducks weren't his ducks weren't blue. <laughs> Stinky ass Jeremy. Uh, all right. uh, well, either way, we get the point. <laughs> I think <laughs> we, we, I like, there yeah, was a point somewhere. There were, we definitely had a point about fatties somewhere. Um, yeah. Look, just like fucking don't overdo it. It's okay to be fat. Just understand where your limit is. Yeah. And if someone if, tries if your to knees hurt when you're walking, if you groan maybe. from just bare basic movements, if you can't give up with that, can't get up from a seated position without having to use leverage, you know, well, that can just be old people too. 
with bad yeah, knees. I'm thinking just fat, fat fat people who can't do that. That's just what I'm getting at. I mean, I, I'm old and fat, dude. I've start I've started doing it lately, like because of my therapy. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do the push off of shit. I'm gonna stand up using just my core and my legs. And fucking exercise some shit that I don't do. Um, and, 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 and and you know, going through this therapy every three every other day, basically. You know, because the exercises they have me do that I'm supposed to be doing more of at home, but I haven't been doing that many lately. Um, uh, it shows me how weak and shitty I've gotten in places that I thought I was still good. So it it's like it took it's like in this case it took my body shaming me <laughs> to go, hey dumbass, get good, or you're gonna fucking die somehow. So um, to have that conversation with someone else if you have to, but don't be mean about it and don't you know hurt them like my body did to me um but i think i think it's just the idea that like there's acceptance there's kindness and doing nothing is not necessarily going to be the best thing for someone but also being an asshole is rarely going to be the right thing unless you have a fat friend and you're fat too in which case it's definitely the thing to do and there are tons of people who believe that being shitty to people is motivating when in reality it's not being yeah. shitty I, i've had people be shitty to me and it's actually going opposite direction like, yeah. oh you're yeah. shitty to me i'm gonna be okay, shitty back well yeah. i'll tell you yeah or i'm just never gonna talk to you again but that's what i said it's like if it's a buddy it's one thing it's like if it's a stranger it's yeah. another it's like hey you're a fat piece of shit and i hope you know it and then you fucking walk away then, <laughs> from once again, and, it's Walmart. Why? Why? I just wanted to get some. F <laughs> I just wanted to buy my miniature carrots and fucking go home. This guy's yelling at me in the produce section. I'm trying to be better. God damn it. And start crying and they go pick up donuts instead. So, yeah, don't be a dick. It, the, you don't have to be a dick about it. Be kind in your concern for someone else. Don't be a fucking asshole. And I have teammates that actually will like because of me doing jujitsu. We're all grappling. We're wrestling weight matters so yeah. i do have teammates that will remind me because there is a way to be heavy like we always say you know being heavy is a skill and it is yes. true yes. you know there is a way to you know apply that pressure but there are times where people know like oh my god dude <laughs> like mm -hmm. how much are you weighing now <laughs> it's like oh, about 215 they're like uh, i can tell it's like, Fuck. All right, no, it's no they're like mm, 220 <laughs> <laughs> it's like are you sure that's that's when they're like, literally under you and you're like mm, 220 <laughs> Jiggle, jiggling like, the belly a little bit. Mm. I'm sensing 27 right now. I'll be like, I used to not be able to grab you here. I think you probably put on a couple pounds, buddy. Uh, it's like, this is a no-gi, yeah. but I can still grab you like there is one. <laughs> it's time. To, it's like, that's what happens when, when uh, somebody from my 600-pound life goes into doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu after the fact, and I just have flaps everywhere. It's like just wearing a gi. Uh, Skin gi. Uh, Man. sometimes my geese are a little skin tight and oh that's when, it, that's when you know it's a problem that reminds me i forgot that was the other the other movie we we're supposed to do in january fucking tusk we gotta write that down i yes yeah i have yeah. tusk i forgot tusk, about it uh, i forgot because I, I forgot about the uh i was thinking about tremors forgot about tusk i'm talking about the okay, skin tremors, i actually forgot about tusk right down, i tremors. had fucked off and and the pope's exorcist Yes, is is now going to be moved in fucking place of the exorcist. All of the exorcist. Yeah, nobody wants to fucking see the movie with me and fucking come back and talk about it. They're, They're so like, fucking mean. Mm, huh? Fuck y'all. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Fuck it. When does it come out? Uh, it comes out next. What, what's today? The twenty comes out on the sixth of October. Oh, okay. Well, we can swing it. So the plan for me was to have it out for the thirteenth, though. Yeah. So hmm. we'll see. We could try. We can probably or the twentieth. I'm sorry, the twentieth. Yeah, I was gonna say I got time. We could probably swing it. It's like right, if well, I have we'll to talk. if I have to help you with that, I will do so. I won't be mean to you. I will I won't be mean well, like your other friends, and I will watch the Exorcist movie with Dave, sort of, from a distance. And and, and I'll, I'll let you know right now. I will fucking shame them all as I record and mention how none of them want to do it. Well, that's that's me like none here with all my other co-hosts who can't be fucking available. Where are you at, fuckers? That's why none of you get links this Dicks. week. Dante gets all the links. It's just me and Dante, only ones in the links. This is the first time Ricky's. Fuckers. This is the first time Ricky's losing links. Mm, Ricky's see? losing links because he ain't fucking. He knows Ricky, the rules now. Together, he knows the rules now. 
All right, either way, hmm. it's go time. So, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Let us know in the comments down below how big of an asshole I am for bringing it up in the first place. Or are you tired of all the ridiculous acceptance movements and you just want things to go back to the point where you can just have a meaningful conversation with somebody without them uh, screaming and crying in the middle of a target? Um, you know, something like that. It's just I'm like Walmart, Target, wherever, you know. You know, something like that. So, either way, let us know about your thoughts in the thing or write in to now you made it awkward mail at gmail.com. And of course, go check out Dante's channels, all linked down below. Uh, I'm actually currently near the end of the uh, the Holly Horror uh, episode of uh, so oh, you, okay. the book sounds intriguing, actually. And I just started re reading the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's books to, oh, nice, to gear nice. up for the movie because I'm excited for the fucking movie. So uh, I wanted yeah, to I wanted we'll to be checking books. it out. Yeah, I'm. Ex it looks fucking awesome. It was like, dude, it's like they made fucking a those animatronics look so goddamn real. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they took something from a video game and made it real in real life. They said, "Hey, what if we actually did this?" Mm. You know, <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> they're like, up to like, well, how about we don't? <laughs> it's like they are bolted to the floor, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally, totally bolted to the floor. It's not going to move on its own, right? Yeah. Like it looks like it's moving though, dude. I, I sure, dude. I, if I was the one in charge of that shit, I absolutely would be fucking with people when the lights are off. It's like like I, the T Rex. See. You remember T Rex in Jurassic Park when the thing would suddenly short and go nuts when people are just standing around it? They're like, no, no, <laughs> I'd be fucking with people so hard to be like, because now it's all remote control bullshit. Now they're like on their fucking phone doing this shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, guys, anyways, we're going to go ahead and go. So, uh, like, subscribe to all that bullshit. I don't care. You know, it's nice. I like, we're getting subscribers. I digs that. So, we're almost to 50. Who cares? It's just a nice. number. It's a number. Almost to 50 on episode 70. And with that, guys, okay, bye. Play my balls. No. Fucking asshole. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats